There we are. Yes. We're all here. This is uh, the first scene after the opening musical number in Candace Against the Universe. We're going to have Swampy read all the uh, all the screen direction. Even though Monogram isn't in it, try to enjoy this part anyway. Yes, it's, it's, exactly. It's fairly good. Very yes. good. All right, take it away, Swampy Marsh. Candace's song, Such a Beautiful Day, is interrupted when she looks up and sees the head of a giant robot above the roof of the house. Also, kids flying up in the air. The kids are yelling and squealing with glee. Revelry. Wait a minute. Phineas and Ferb! Candace runs in through the house to the backyard to find Phineas, Ferb, Buford, Baljeet, Isabella, and the Fireside Girls being juggled by a gigantic robot. Woo! <laughs> 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 loves it! A look of steely determination comes over Candace. Okay, this ends today. Smash cut to our title card. Phineas and Ferb, Candace against the universe. Ferb, Ferb. And then we're suddenly out in space. A large reddish planet fills the top of the frame. Kubricky music lends its cinematic grandeur. There is a low hum, at first barely perceptible, but it steadily grows louder. As it does, the planet begins to vibrate. It swings side to side violently, and we pull back to reveal the planet is not a planet at all, but the giant uvula of Candace, and the sound coalesces into a human voice Candace is standing in the backyard, holding her phone and emitting a familiar yell. Mom! Oh, Candace, I almost hesitate to ask, but what is it this time? It's, it's, it's hard to explain. Where are you? I'm almost home. Candace hangs up. Yes! <laughs> We cut to the exterior of Doofenshmirtz Evil Incorporated Balcony. Doofenshmirtz Evil Incorporated. I've got my own jingle. Perry the Platypus and Dr. Doofenshmirtz are mid-battle. Doof is in a mechanized platypus suit. He swats Perry with his mechanical platypus tail, knocking him into some cleaning supplies. Finally, we are evenly matched. It's too late, Perry the Platypus. My power vacuuminator will soon turn the mayor's mansion into lint and then vacuum it up there by creating an actual power vacuum for me to fill. See? See how I use vacuum as both a transitive verb and an abstract concept? That's grammatical versatility. Doofenshmirtz get hit in the face with his own vacuum cleaner, which Perry has thrown, knocking him into the power vacuuminator and spinning it around. The innator emits a purple beam diagonally down from the balcony. We cut to Phineas and Ferb's backyard. Candace is watching the kids get juggled by the robot. She hears mom's car pull up in the driveway, turns her head for just a second, during which the purple ray comes in from off screen, hits the robot, turning it into a giant robot-shaped lint blob. Candace turns back to see the transformed lint blob just as the kids all land on it, giggling. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> but, but, but. She goes up to it and touches it. It's, it's, oh, I don't know what it is, but it's still here. This is it. You guys are finally busted. Excited, she runs back to the gate, opens it, calls through to mom, who is just getting out of the car. Mom, 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 mom. What? What is it? It's still here! What is still here? It's, it's even harder to explain! Come on, come on! We cut to Doofenshmirtz Evil Incorporated. Doof is lying at the base of the innator. A big vacuum hose attachment rises out of the top of the innator and begins to suck air. Doof turns to Perry. Ah, oh. oh, I see what you did there. You, you used vacuum as a noun and a weapon. Touche. Cut back to Phineas and Ferb's backyard. Candace talks as mom gathers groceries from the car. Candace, well, I treasure sure your imagination. Sure Every la, day you la, call la, and tell me Phineas and Ferb have built some big, unbelievable thing in the backyard. And every day I come home to find nothing there. Just please, mom. exhaust you. It exhausts me. I'm begging you. I, I. During this scene, we see the enormous robot-shaped lint blob gradually sucked away, getting smaller and smaller until it is gone, just as mom turns around to see the empty backyard with the kids sitting innocently on the grass. Oh, look, there's nothing there. Candace's jaw drops. She's looked like she's been punched in the gut. Hi, kids. Hi, mom. And as mom goes inside, we go to Candace, just staring at the kids in the spot where the robot was, crushed. Was that lint? It smelled like lint. It tasted like lint. 
Why are you tasting it? You were smelling it. Not on purpose. Ugh. The kids exit. Candace is still shell shocked and muttering to herself. Uh, it's not fair. At which point the brothers notice her. Uh, did you say something, Candace? I said it's not fair. Every day always works out for you. You guys are having a great summer. Candace's whole body is trembling, a volcano ready to erupt, and then it does. Well, we were all having a pretty great- it's Not me, okay? Every day, I get beaten down by the universe. I just, I just feel so defeated. I feel so alone. Candace <laughs> sl slinks away. Phineas and Ferb's jaws are on the floor from the emotional bomb that has just been dropped. Wow, well, we've been having so much fun this summer. I just assumed Candace had been too. We should do something to cheer her up. Oh, we should make her a gift. Let's see. Last time we carved her face in a Mount Rushmore. We quickly cut away to a scene from Candace Loses Her Head where the boys have carved Candace's likeness into Mount Rushmore and the lava begins oozing out of it and destroying it, cutting back. Hmm. Well, let's do something more permanent this time. And scene. <laughs> Can we give David a line at the end of that as as firm so we hear him where he's not? Just have him say, agreed. Agreed. I love you, people. Thank you. I love Thank you guys. You guys. Bye. 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 Bye.